Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start the day off with a few questions. Were you ready for the COVID-19 pandemic? How much did it cost you and your business to react to and navigate through the last you ready for the next one? Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking the answer to that last question is, yeah, we'd be ready. Did Taylor cut out for everyone else too? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna keep rolling and we can cut out this first part later. How do we we'll cut start, it out? We'll I can edit it. I've got a video editing software that I downloaded last night. Okay, um, should I turn my hotspot on then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it might be that Zoom update that's making this glitch. Well, she said all the horror stuff for her class was having. I'm like, oh my God, we don't yeah. need to have those issues. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. <laughs> no. Oh my God. It's easier to edit it than to restart it, the recording? Probably. Yeah. It may yes. take so long to download. It, it. It's 12 videos. So then it has to do 12 videos uh, twice. Ebony's like, are you guys having trouble recording? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, when you go and edit, when you go and edit, are you gonna to have to edit all six videos? Yeah, probably. <clears throat> yeah, Kels, maybe just start it over so you don't have to do that. No, trust me, it, it will. Okay. It will be fine. I would rather edit six videos than have to go back uh -huh. and wait eight thousand hours for it Am to I happen again. Now? That's what Michael said that they did was they edited the video. So I'm trusting him. We're gonna just keep rolling. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Is, am I better now? I'm not glitchy or anything? No, You're I better can hear now. you. Okay. Yep. Let's do a countdown, start over. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that if we're already recording. I can just yeah. start. <laughs> just, we're all going to be ready now. Okay. I am pressing the thing in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start the day off with a few questions. Were you and your business ready for the COVID-19 pandemic? How much did it cost you to navigate through and react to the last year? Would you be ready for the next one? Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking the answer to that last question is, yes, we'd be ready. We, would, we wouldn't prefer it, but we'd be ready because we've learned so much over the last year. But I have one more question for you I'd like you to think carefully about. What if the next pandemic was foodborne? My name is Taylor Devine with Ferrara, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to my team, the Plandemics. With me today, I have Anthony Gonzalez with Albertsons, Eureka McRae with Albertsons, Oscar Perez Sandoval with Gelson's, Claire Topper with PepsiCo, and Dr. Kelsey Voigt Moravec with Cub. So the goal of our presentation today is to get you thinking differently about the next global crisis and how the food industry as a whole needs to refocus in order to be prepared. But before we get started, I'd like to set your expectations as this is not another presentation on COVID-19, but it's important to talk about the past and to talk about this present pandemic as we focus on the future. So today, We'll talk about the importance of scenario planning and starting now before the next crisis hits. We'll talk about supply chain and the need to diversify. And we'll get into what new technologies are out there that will help keep your customers and your employees safe. But today we're only going to scratch the surface of what preparing for future pandemics should look like. So our ask at the end of this presentation will be for you to find experts from your company in these areas and build a team to start planning for the next pandemic. So in order to know where we're going, let's take a look at where we've been. As you can see from this timeline, pandemics have been an issue throughout history. From the bubonic plague in 1347 to the Spanish flu in 1918, we've been fighting pandemics for hundreds of years. But the number of pandemics isn't slowing down. It's actually speeding up. In the past 100 years alone, we've experienced nine major pandemics, including COVID-19. 
According to Dr. Anthony Fauci and Dr. David Morins, we have entered a pandemic era. It's likely that we'll see another pandemic within our lifetime. The next pandemic really isn't a matter of if, but when. Pandemics aren't just occurring more frequently by chance, but because bacteria and viruses are transferring from one species to another more frequently. The main drivers that cause bacteria and viruses to transfer between hosts are climate change, industrial development, ecosystem change, and social inequality. All of these things are prevalent in our society today. Approximately 75% of emerging diseases that affect humans actually originated in animals. The BBC has created a list of potential diseases that may cause the next pandemic, and we'll talk about only three here today. The first one is Nipah virus. Nipah virus is spread through contacted, contact with bats or through bats' fluids that come in contact with the food that people eat. Nipah virus has a 40 to 75% mortality rate and a very long incubation period of anywhere between four and 45 days. This means that an infected person could potentially transfer the virus for a long period of time before they even know they're infected. There's currently no vaccine for Nipah virus. The next one is MERS or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. This is a type of coronavirus found in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Discovered in 2012, MERS is 10 times more deadly than COVID-19. It's likely spread through contact with camel's respiratory droplets or saliva. However, there is concern that it could be spread through camel's milk. Now imagine, what if there was a virus that could be spread through cow's milk? How would that affect our industry? And finally, one we're all familiar with is swine flu. H1N1 is thought to have originated in Mexico in January 2009, but by June 2009, it had spread to 74 countries. H1N1 still f circulates in our flu today, but the risk isn't that you'll get H1N1. It's that pigs can pick up viruses from other animals then that virus mutates in the pig, potentially becoming more deadly before it spreads again to humans. Nipah virus, MERS, swine flu, these are just the diseases that we've already discovered. The viruses from our past may become our future. And scientists estimate that there are approximately 700,000 viruses that we don't even know about yet. Our past is important, but we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the virus that we're living through right now, COVID-19. COVID-19 this past year has been something no one possible could have imagined. It was a year of hard work and figuring out ways to keep our customers and our employees safe. We would first like to thank all the heroes in this industry for all your countless hours you and your team did to get food in people's homes. Thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, you are a hero. COVID-19 has affected over 31.1 million people in the United States. And our thoughts and our prayers go out to the 567,000 people that have lost their lives. COVID-19 cost the U.S. over $7.5 trillion in lost GDP. It has cost retailers over $24 billion of additional expenses. That's approximately $24,000 to $50,000 per store over 12 billion in payroll, another 3 billion for cleaning and sanitation, and over 1 billion for PPE. CPG companies lost billions and billions in sales, and many of their costs went up over 50%. Pressure from retailers to get product to their stores, imported and exporting goods were a very big challenge, and countries and borders were shut down. Factories and warehouses were closed from production or closed due to state compliance and employees being sick customers changing to other brands and products to be able to feed their families. We all remember these pictures of our stores. Stores look like they're going out of business. Empty shelves, empty back rooms, empty warehouse to manufacturing plants, and an empty supply chain. The supply chain at all levels had many issues. 
months and months of inventory gone in two weeks. Food service and self-service departments closed. Categories like paper, water, pasta, meat gone. Limits placed on key products in our stores. Retailers reaching out to any company possible to get products for their customers. COVID-19 has taught us a lot this past year. We know that safety for our employees and our customers is a top priority. But COVID-19, it won't be the last pandemic. We need all retail, CPGs, and the whole grocery industry to work together now. We are all ready for the next pandemic, right? We don't want history to repeat itself and planning needs to start now. The team recommends starting with number one, implement scenario planning. Number two, understand, diversify and transform your supply chain. And number three, invest in new technologies to keep employees and customers safe. Let's first look at scenario planning. Well, we all have that big red emergency binder that just sits in our office and collects dust. But is that sufficient? We all currently use scenario planning, whether it's for budgeting sales, projecting holiday impacts, or an incoming competitor analysis. But what scenario planning should not be is a fire, dr fire drill response to an extreme situation. The recent pandemic has exposed some serious vulnerabilities in our global food ecosystem. This disruption has dramatically increased the level of uncertainty and forced businesses to have to pivot their strategic plans on the fly. As leaders, we should use scenario planning to pressure test our strategy and create risk mitigation protocols that will allow us to react, but more than anything, adapt more quickly. So ask yourself this, does your team have a crisis playbook? While there's not a one size fits all model that we can share, we recommend that you set up scenario planning teams within your organization to articulate your company crisis plan for all the unknown possibilities. Preparation matters. Taking all these factors into account will aid us in winning the battle before we even fight it. If there's one big takeaway from the world's response to the recent pandemic so far, it's that we've been too slow, too slow in preparing for the next crisis and too slow in reacting and putting in place action plans that will prepare us for the worst. In a sense, those who fail to plan are planning to fail. A crisis playbook should include some of the following considerations. We recommend the use of AI planning that's informed by an expert domain of knowledge, since some of these scenarios have never yet occurred and can be projected as a source for creating your scenario plans. AI has a cap capability to generate many different scenarios and explore a variety of futures and predictions of our needs. Designing your playbook should start with some key questions that are specific to your industry, such as listed. But starting with an operational risk management focus that's focused on the consequences of the event rather than the event itself will help us diagnose any potential impacts. Identifying where your critical dependencies lie and the degree of control that you may have over them if you were to lose one, some, or even all of them will be key. There's three types of basic uncertainties that we should be considering during scenario planning. Business uncertainties that are within your organization's control, industry uncertainties that you may be able to influence but not necessarily control, and environment uncertainties, such as political, social, or an environmental event where you have no control. We recommend that your scenario planning team create a playbook that's beyond the fire drill and earthquake plans that we currently have. Make scenario planning part of your yearly review trainings since fully reminding your employees of the scenarios and the actions they need to take is critically important. Too often we find that people forget what it is to be expected all because it's not practiced on a regular basis. So ask yourself this, does your organization have a plan if the next pandemic is foodborne? Now that we discussed scenario planning, how will you be able to protect your supply chain? We have spent decades building efficient and lean supply chains. So lean that we plowed through four months of supply in just two weeks. COVID exposed cracks in our industry and had a dramatic impact on our entire supply chain. Over 85% of supply chain leaders globally struggle with outdated and inefficient technology. Over 70% face, face problems with their suppliers, their distribution networks, and production. It's clear we were not ready for a pandemic. So how are we preparing for the next? The first step is truly knowing and understanding your suppliers. Many of you may know your first year supplier, 
but can you trace the product back to your second, third, and fourth tier suppliers? In fact, only 36% of global companies know their second tier suppliers. We recommend you mapping your entire supplier network. With companies like Resilient, you can save time and labor to develop these complex maps. These maps will help you identify risks and issues within your supply chain and help you plan, respond, and pivot within hours. When you effectively plan with your suppliers, these maps will be revealing and transparent. They'll include your, your supplier's geographic location, their delivery performance, transportation routes, and raw, raw material sourcing. 10 years from now, the firm's mapping and planning with their supplier network today will be more resilient even during a pandemic. The next step is building a re resilient and agile supply chain. There are four key components to develop a resilient supply chain. The first, end-to-end -end collaboration. All of your cross-functional teams in your organization must use a common source of data. It requires suppliers and retailers to share data consistently, increasing visibility and transparency within the supply chain. The second is AI technology. AI technology helps mitigate human forecasting errors and can identify supply chain areas in distress. AI solutions would actually preempt disruptions in the supply chain, even in a pandemic. Supply chain should also be cloud-based. What does that mean? Cloud-based provides a platform for companies to collaborate, share, and track information real time. And lastly, a diversified supply chain. You should have local, regional, and global suppliers. Having this network helps you mitigate impact issues to your supply chain and allows you to pivot very quickly. We must put the supply chain as a top priority. And another area you should be considering are specific ways to keep your employees and your customers safe. We know the safety of our employees and our customers is our number one priority. As we look towards the future with increased safety measures as an industry, there are two examples of innovative technologies like antiviral uniforms and antimicrobial packaging that are emerging trends to reduce disease spread. Our frontline employees come in contact with thousands of customers and products daily. By providing employees with antiviral uniforms such as polo shirts, aprons, hats, and gloves for our grocery stockers and distribution centers and our CPG partners, we can protect our employees and reduce the spread of disease. The textiles are treated with chemicals aimed at destroying particles that cause COVID-19. This trend is applicable towards other viruses and not just COVID-19. Scott Pantel, the CEO of Life Science Intelligence says, the antimicrobial textile market is going to be one of the rare markets that is not only having a short-term bounce from the COVID pandemic, but will experience long-term growth providing antiviral uniforms and continuing daily sanitation and cleaning practices creates a healthy and safe environment for everyone. Another approach is implementing antimicrobial packaging into our grocery stores, our personal markets, our hospitals, and even our universities. So what is antimicrobial packaging? Let's watch this quick video from Pack Innovation. In the environment where we live, there are millions of microbes, most of which are not visible to the human eye. Although invisible, microbes continue to cause health problems. Microbes can be transmitted in the following ways. Coughing and sneezing, contact with infected objects, contaminated surfaces, water, and food. Explanation of treatment. The threat posed by bacteria has inspired PAC Innovation, the innovative startup of the group Metal Chemica, to research and develop a unique antimicrobial plastic packaging for pharma, food, and cosmetics. The antimicrobial treatment greatly reduces the risk of transmission of bacteria and viruses without compromising the quality of the product and its packaging. The treatment is highly resistant to environmental conditions and changes ensuring that it remains active for the lifetime of the product. Just after 30 minutes from the treatment, the plastic packaging will show a reading of zero microbes. From the video, we heard how antimicrobial 
packaging protects consumers by inhibiting the growth of pathogens, but it also extends the shelf life and preserves food quality. Imagine the cost savings to your company with the reduction in expenses and food waste by using this packaging. Analyst predicts the market demand for antimicrobial plastics will grow at a compound annual growth rate of 5.4% by 2027. The Asia Pacific region is currently the fastest growing market with consumer shopping habits changing to producing more prepackaged foods and rising consumer awareness related to increasing cases of viral bacteria outbreaks will drive the demand for antimicrobial packaging. Retailers who are first to market with implementing these new technologies will provide consumers another level of protection while shopping in their stores. If your company isn't invested in these packages, another company will. Let that sink in. If you and your company are not investing in planning for this, someone else's is. So today we recommended a handful of ways to start. We looked into scenario planning and the importance of starting now before the next global crisis hits. We talked about supply chain and the need to diversify and know your supply, supplier's suppliers. And then we went through what new technologies are out there like antiviral and antimicrobial packaging. But before we close, I'd like you to think about the military. When you sign up for the army, do they ship you off to battle the next day? No, of course not. You spend months, if not years, preparing for that day that you deploy. And what about the medical field? Doctors, nurses, same thing. They spend years and years studying, planning, and preparing before they ever see an operating room. So if we as the grocery industry are gonna wear that hero badge, what makes us different? So our ask of you today is to find experts from your company in these areas and build a team to create a plan to prepare for the next pandemic. And just because your business made it through this last one doesn't guarantee your spot through the next one. So we'll leave you with the wise words of Winston Churchill, never let a good crisis go to waste. Thank you. And for those of you who have questions, please send an email, send us an email to the link listed below, taylor.divine.2021 at marshall.usc.edu. Thank you.